Hey guys, this is Mark from zcarguide.com and this is just going to be a quick guide to replacing the spark plugs in your S30 Z car, so 240Z, 260Z, or 280Z. Um, and uh, things, you know, tools and parts you're going to need here. Um, the spark plugs we use for all Z cars is an NGK BP6 ES plug. Um, I always use the Haynes manual for just about anything I do on my Z car. Um, obviously a ratchet with a spark plug socket, a torque wrench, some grease or anti-seize um, for coating the, the threads with, so, you know, just as a precautionary measure. And uh, a spark plug gap tool, which will allow you to determine the gap of the spark plug and adjust it if you need to. Just a quick note on the actual spark plugs. Um, the plugs listed in the description um, on Amazon are the exact same kind you need. Um, but if you do find ones that are instead of BP6ES, they say BPR6ES, um, those will work too. And that just means that it has a resistance band on them. Um, which doesn't really mean anything with the 240Z um, because it's mostly useful in cars that have ECUs and it prevents that from interfering with the sparking. Um, so like I said, having a BPR 6ES won't make any difference. You might also say, see um, BP6 ES11 plugs, which just means they're, uh, they're pre-gapped pre to 11 millimeters. We're going to be gapping these anyway, so it doesn't matter. But, um, but yeah, th those products will both work. But if you're just going, I would just click the description and um, that would work. Okay, so below I wrote down the suggested spark plug gap ranges for these different Z cars. Uh, for the 240Z and 260Z, it's the same thing, 0.031 to 0.035 inches. The 280Z is a little bit different at 0.039 to 0.043 inches. Um, and everything is in inches because usually these tools are all in inches. Um, I also kind of wanted to briefly discuss, for those of you who may not be aware, um, what exactly a spark plug gap range refers to. And it's very simple, it's just the difference between this tab and that little puck right there, so where that can go in there. Um, as far as how you measure that, you kind of do what I was doing just now, and you go like that, and you rotate it until it stops, like I can't move that anymore. So you can see it's just below 0.04. These four were good, or you know, two were good, and then I had to adjust two of them, but I'll grab that one I was just looking at now and um, show you how you, you, you know, make this gap smaller again. Um, and this one, it does take a little bit of muscle, not a whole lot, but you kind of go like that, and, and make sure you're not doing much with the ceramic piece at all. Piece at all. You just go like that and you kind of try and just push kind of gently, but definitely a little bit of muscle is necessary to push them down. Everything has to be done pretty gently, especially widening the gap because it's very easy to go overboard and, and over widen it. So here it just needs a slight change. So I'm gonna to try to be as gentle as I can with it. Um, probably is best to go on this side actually. And they don't need a lot and there's nothing wrong with coming up short because you can just redo it but it's annoying if you if you go over so uh, now we're actually going to be removing the spark plugs themselves so remove this the the, uh, the plug wires one by one um, everything should be in order as according to these here um, if it's not uh, for whatever reason just make make note of that so you don't uh, screw that up when you plug them back in. Another thing to remember is that you should only be doing this on a cold engine, um, especially the when, you, when you're plugging them back in or when you're torquing them back in, because if they're not, if it's a, if it's a hot engine and you plug them back in um, and you torque them down and then it cools once they've been torqued down, you could potentially be setting yourself up for a lot of issues later on um, because it might be extremely difficult to get that plug out. So, probably doesn't take a whole lot before you can start removing them by hand. And yeah, just uh, get them all out of there and then we can inspect them. So inspecting your old spark plugs can actually tell you a lot about how your engine is performing. Um, the Haynes manual comes with a pretty handy chart of, um, you know, what all these things mean and, um, you know, what exactly might be wrong with your engine, if anything. Um, mine, you can tell, have a lot of carbon buildup here, which according to that chart says that um, it indicates that there's a rich mixture, which actually makes a lot of sense because uh, my carburetors have not been very properly tuned recently, and I'm working on that right now. So the next thing you're going to want to do is prep these with some, uh, some grease or anti-seize to, um, you know, prevent, like I said, any potential seizing up of these once they're in the engine. You actually don't need a whole lot. In fact, I probably didn't have too much on that. Uh, make sure you're you're setting them down on something pretty clean. So 
you know, if you sit it down and that, that newly applied grease or anisease doesn't pick up on some dust or whatever and, you know, throw that into the engine, shouldn't be a huge issue, but that's just something to, to keep in mind. But like I said, you don't need a lot. And uh, this is also a good time to make sure you have the proper range. Ooh, got way too much there. Um, yeah, this is another time, you know, a good time to check the range with the, uh, with the gap tool here and make sure it's accurate before you put these into your engine. Um, these look pretty good, but, you know, like I said, just give it one more shot and see what, uh, what it looks like still. So you're going to want to go ahead and start reinserting these spark plugs. Um, you should be able to do it almost entirely by hand um, to prevent cross-threading. If you do notice a little bit of resistance, um, I would try to take it out and and reinsert it and make sure you know you have it correct because cross threading is is not fun. You don't want to do that. Sorry. So you want to be torquing these to eleven to fifteen foot pounds. So. Probably somewhere right in between uh, 0, and 24, 0 and 25 at 12 and a half is probably good. Um, so let's get this first one here. Using an extension doesn't matter with a torque wrench, um, just kind of how torque works. And then you're going to want to plug these back in, making sure that they're in the exact same order they came off. And uh, that should be it.